Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and this study taught by Brother John Albaugh titled The First Xmas. This is part one of two. Well, first and foremost, I thought you'd enjoy this cartoon from Charles Schultz. And amen, amen. There's no better teacher than the Holy Spirit and no better text than God's Word. And we are blessed here at BBF Ohio to know which text is God's Word. And we are blessed, we are blessed 100% of having the Lord Jesus Christ to live inside of us. And guys, you know this, there's no difference between the Holy Spirit and the King James Bible. They are both one and one. That's Christ on this planet living in us. So, uh, the, uh, I normally don't wear ties here, but I thought I'd wear my Charlie Brown tie, my Peanuts tie. And uh, the topic today has to deal with the first Xmas. All right. One of the things that piqued my interest in Charles Schultz is uh, in 1965, he was asked by CBS to go ahead and do a Charlie Brown Christmas. So he went ahead and wrote the script 10 weeks away from production for it to be on TV. And uh, CBS looked at the script and sent it back to him and said, hey, this part about Linus quoting the King James Bible with the Christmas, that has got to be deleted. The public will not buy that. And so Charles Schultz went ahead and gave him a call and said, okay, no TV special. Click. Awesome. All right. Now, get the picture here. CBS did not want where Linus says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Amen. which is Christ the Lord. That's called Xmas. X being the unknown. All right, and if you know your Bible at all, you'll end up understanding that the word X and Xmas not has to do with Christ, it has to do with the Antichrist. And that's the goal that they want to put in. And by knocking out Christ, they can now bring in the other man, the Antichrist, and have him take over Christianity. And that's why we see Christianity falling apart, because Christ is being kicked out every single place. Mm -hmm. Xmas, and it goes right back into the scriptures. So, Charles Schultz said, no more Charlie Brown special click. He took on the entire corporation. And if you guys understand anything all about CBS and the corporation, uh, Chick Publications published just on them. There was a list of this corporation owns this corporation owns this corporation. Good night. Here's CBS at number 12. All right. Number 25 was Word Publishers, who went ahead. Word Publishers, Chris Publication, they were the ones that published Madonna's book. Isn't that interesting? Focus on the family, so we're not dealing with you anymore. And they got into some more problems because they refused to do business with Word Publishers. Yep. Who's at the top here? Illuminati out of London. Fascinating. Charles Schultz took on the whole conglomeration and said, no Charlie Brown Christmas and hung up. Now, what cracks me up, it took these guys seven days to talk about it. <laughs> seven days! And they said, okay, we'll go ahead and put it back on. You can keep it in there. Guys, this is what, the 55th year it's been in there? Yeah, right. Or more? Good night. It's been on every single Christmas, every single year since then. And you guys, we have the same power in Christ. The only thing is we don't exercise it. We don't have the faith to exercise it. And we need to. And uh, so I really appreciate him. I really appreciate him taking the stand. And this is one of his cartoons. You couldn't ask for a, a better text for going into today's message. No better teacher than the Holy Spirit. I'm just up here to help you out. The topic today is gigantic. Uh, if, uh, I'm asking the Lord to give you guys understanding in it. We can't cover the entire topic the way like it could be because it's just so gigantic. And I just pray that you guys will take the wisdom for it. Um, I, I will have you understand that the guy standing before you uh, this past week, I was asked by my sister, I have a niece called, well, I won't mention the name. I'm going to be nice. Okay? Mm -hmm. She's involved in doing a play with two other of her Christian friends. She's a Christian, and she has two friends with the Christians, and they've got involved in acting. And so last night they did um, a, a different verse of Alice in the Wonderland. Well, she was leading the, the, the lead play, the lead role Alice in there. And, and she asked her mom to tell me, please don't give gospel tracts to the cast, because it hurts their feelings. Oh, please. 
Has, oh, it makes him feel uncomfortable. Guys, I've been banned. Now, in the last couple of years, that's the fifth time I've been banned. <clears throat> I've been banned at Hat Price Bookstore for passing out tracks, personally by the manager. All right? I've been banned at two weddings now. And uh, a good night, I hate to tell you, I've been banned at a church <laughs> that did not want me passing out tracks. Now, I got reinstated when I led one of them to the Lord. So they took the ban off. All right? Now get this, out of the five bands, four are ladies. There's something wrong with this picture. Amen. One of them's a business and one's a church. All right? And three of them are relatives. <laughs> <laughs> so standing before you is the black sheep of the family, okay? And maybe the black sheep of Christianity, I don't know. But uh, I'm not going to stop giving out tracks. I did pass one out to Dominic there last night. And uh, of course, the, the, uh, I didn't get the cast. I prayed for him still, though. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, let's see what the next thing, there you go, the first Xmas. All right, let's have some fun with the Word of God today. It is so rich, it's so powerful, and so strong. Uh, and uh, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just call upon your precious name today, Lord. Uh, and I thank you for the fact that out of Psalm 138, too, that your word is more important than your name. And you've got it stated right in there. And I've had several pastors tell me that your name is more important than the book. And uh, guys, Lord, uh, they're not in the book. So they just have no concept. And I don't even know why they're in the, even in the pulpit, Lord. But uh, I pray for your tender mercies upon them. I just so much want you to be lifted up and glorified today. And Lord, I certainly can't do it. As we saw in our picture, it's got to be the work of the Holy Spirit. It's got to be the work of your word in the hearts of these people. I pray, Lord, you give them understanding open up their hearts, and any problems they may have, Lord, may they pour it at your feet today and see that all the answers are in your word. Be merciful to us without, our frames are but dust, and without you we can do absolutely nothing. Be lifted up and glorified in our midst today, Lord, and uh, with what time is left between now and the rapture, may we affect every single person we can in the worlds that we live in. Be merciful to us, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 All right, first Xmas. See what we got here. Oops, sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. Okay. Just to give you an idea of how God works. This verse right here, it says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. Notice, they didn't believe because of the word of God. They believed because they saw miracles. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Now I'm sort of mystified here. Here's a whole bunch of people now believing on his name, but he did not commit himself unto them. Because the word says he knew all men, and that includes everyone in this room today. And he did not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Now, this verse puzzled me a little bit because I'm saved. And I'm going, if he didn't commit himself to those other believers, well, how about us? All right? So I prayed to the Lord, and I said, Lord, who do you commit yourself to? I mean, what, I mean, how do you commit yourself to people? And so what the Lord shared with me is that he commits himself to his word, to his written word. That's what he commits himself to. The, um, and let's see what we've got here. Now, I looked over all the different dictionaries on the planet here, and I could not come up with a true definition for the word commit. So this is what I came up with in prayer before the Lord. It's giving yourself to the successful completion and preservation of a relationship, a promise or a project through a transition of self-sacrifice. That's really what the word commit to. So there's actually three different things that the commitment goes to, to relationship. So if you're talking about marriage, okay, you're committed to seeing that relationship go through. You have a friend. My wife's night verse for our marriage is uh, Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times. Not some of the times, not part of the times. A friend loveth at all times. And if you understand the word pastor, it means to feed, it means to disciple, 
and to associate with as a friend. A friend. And the word friend means lover, to love, to give yourself to. So that's why the, you see the word love up there. All right. Or a promise. There's so many promises that God makes to us out of his book. And I'm sure if you take a look at your own life, there are certain promises that you've made. And what? You want to have a successful completion of the promise that you made. And I can stand up here and tell you, I haven't kept all the promises that I made to everyone I've talked to. And I just ask the Lord's forgiveness for it. I, I don't know if it's uh, uh, not in the brain, or I lost track of it, I, I lose thinking of it. But I'm not, I, I've not been a very good sick promise keeper. Sorry. I thank the Lord that he is a good promise keeper. Because yeah. he will see it to the successful completion. Now, I didn't care for the word project. I couldn't think of anything else. I prayed on it. But if you look at the word as, for Christianity, to project. We are given the image of Christ. And as we fellowship with him, we project the image of Christ. Amen. And we do it whether we're handing out water to people whether we're taking care of basic needs, whether we're fellowshipping, we are projecting the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the way it should be. And uh, in Hebrews 16, 17, it says, whereby there are two immutable things whereby God can not lie. You do a careful study of scripture, what are the two immutable things where he can't lie? First of all, it's his spoken word. His spoken word. So before there's even the written word, he spoke the word. And if you compare scripture with scripture, you'll find out there are times when the spoken word of God is also called scripture, even though it's not written down. The spoken word. And then we have the written word. That is the other thing where we cannot lie. And we have a Bible today, the authorized King James, that cannot lie. And we know it by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Can not lie. If you've got any other Bible right now, as far as on the English market, they are liars, they are phony, Amen. Amen. and you cannot grow to really know the Lord Jesus Christ because of those stupid Bibles that are running around. Right. Yeah. They've been fooled. And the reason we, we have so many phony Bibles going around is because God's people have not been reading this book, so when a phony comes in, there it is, oh, look, how about that? And they totally script that point, taking in Satan's book. And Satan knows scripture too. Next thing we want to get into, today's text, 2 Corinthians 2.17. Paul writes here, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. You got text right here, God's word can be corrupted, we'll learn about that. But it's sincerity, but as of God in the sight, uh, the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Probably didn't type that perfectly, sorry about that. <laughs> but we know what it means. All right, there's two spiritual camps coming out of this verse. Bible corruptors. Notice, many. We are not many. Which means in the time of Paul, many people were starting to take the text of God and corrupt it. Right. All right? But Paul says here, sincerity. That's why I got the guy, little guy praying. Lord, what do you want to share with us out of your book? We're trusting you. The word sincerity means to be without wax, to not to be phony. Our context is, of course, the Christmas story that's found in Matthew 2, verses 1 to 23. We're going to cover as much as we can. First of all, we found out, uh, I think a week ago, we found out the first Noel was around 4 B.C. approximately. All right? Since we, man has screwed up time, we have a five-year difference. So if someone wants to go with 5 B.C., someone wants to go with 3 B.C., timeline is screwed up. 4 B.C. is fairly close, and that's good enough for me at this time. Two years later, we have the first Exodus. And that's the title of our story today, the first Exodus. Now, it's the story of the wise man seeking Christ. X is the Greek letter for chai, which means Christ first used in the first 1500s. When they wanted to use an abbreviation, they would put an X in there. All right? And so Xmas was common from 1500 up to uh, presently. However, we're learning in a, in a generation that knows so much they know nothing. Totally dumb. We don't even remember that X means chai in the whole works. All right? Now, we'll find out where Christ is left out, death follows. Every single time. When you have a phony Bible, the same thing is going to happen. Death is going to follow, right. not life. Now, our story is about two kings, two Bibles, two kinds of worship, two types of nature, 
and two foundations. So let's go ahead and have some fun here. Okay, first point, God is committed to fulfilling his word, and that's in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. That's the word. Yeah, God is committed to fulfilling his word. Guys, that's probably the most important truth I could ever share with you the entire day today. All right? He is committed to fulfilling his word. There are some things here. Uh, Pastor Miller already went over. If you've been here the last few weeks, you already know quite a few of the promises found in the Christmas story. God promised us a Savior. That's in Genesis 3.15. Judah is where the tribe he would come out of. Genesis 49.10. He'd come out of Bethlehem. That's Micah 5.2. He would die for our sins. That's in Isaiah chapter 53, 5-11. Born of a virgin. That's uh, Isaiah 7.14. This child is the mighty God. That's found in Isaiah 9, 6. One of my favorite verses is Psalm 132, 11. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I sit upon the throne. God himself. God says, I'm going to sit on the throne of David. You can't have any better clear text than that, that this babe born in Bethlehem is God himself. And, of course, the wise men come by and say, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Can't find any clear context there. The two lines of Christ, Joseph comes from Solomon, that's Matthew 1, 6, so do that he's of the fruit of the body of David. And then his other son, Mary, comes from Nathan, and that's found in Luke three thirty one. The line of Christ comes from both from the line of David. Okay, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. Okay, God's Spoken word produces faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's on there, right? Okay. The other thing is, God is a spirit. Oh, let's see, wait. Then we are, the wise men say, we are come, we are come to worship him. God's written word produces genuine worship. We have the genuine book. We are come to worship him is found in the text here. And God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And in John 17, 17, Christ says, thy word is truth. We have the truth in the authorized King James. We can worship him in truth because we have the truth. Okay, verses 1 and 2. There came wise men to worship him. God's promised word produces action. The wise men were where? In the east. What did they do? They traveled to the west. God's word produces action. Whatever book they had of God, wherever they came from, they read it, and the word of God produced action. They went from point A to point B. And to worship him. Again, that's action. God's word always produces action. And a few verses, you already know John 3.16, For God so loved the world, he gave. That's action. The Word of God produces action. What did he do? He gave us the Lord Jesus Christ at the time of Christmas. He hath begun a good work in you. When you're saved, the Lord Jesus Christ lives within you. He lives in with you by his Holy Spirit. And now you have the Word of God. He began a good work. Where? With the Holy Spirit, with the Word of God. He's now committed to the Word of God that's placed in your heart. And the more that you and I can get the Word of God into our heart, the more we give him something to work with to do some great things within us. And that all comes from his Word, and he fulfills it. So when he fulfills his Word in us, it does the same identical thing. The next point is, man is committed to perverting God's Word. And that's found in Matthew 2, verses 3-8. And this is another part of the testimony that came on here. Uh, one of the things we have to find out, it says, you know, Christ himself, he did not commit himself to man because he knew what was in man. And every single person is the lust nature. And the lust nature is carried out with lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All right? Every single day, guys, if you're like me whatsoever, and I, you have to be, the nature's there, we have to come before the Lord, and like in the picture here, we have to pick up the cross. Paul said, he said, I die daily. If Paul was struggling with the same problems that we have, so did he. 
He had every single day he had a choice. Am I going to serve the flesh nature or am I going to serve the spirit nature? And every single day he had to come before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to die to self. I'm picking up my cross today and I'm going to follow you. It's just the way that it has to be. When we don't follow the word and we're not in the word, uh, the flesh nature goes haywire. Amen. Now, we find out in, um, I think it's verse 5, the wise men have already come to town. They said, we have come to worship the king of the Jews. Amen. Now, when you study history, you find out that Herod was the guy that went ahead and repaired the temple. And because he repaired the temple, he was given the title. Believe it or not, king of the Jews. That was his title. Jews so happy getting their temple rebuilt. And what happens? These, these wise men show up. Where is he that's born king of the Jews? Well, good night. It creates trouble in the heart. He's got competition. He doesn't want someone else coming in and, and getting his territory. He wants to be top dog. He wants to be top of the hill. And guys, just so you know, as far as uh, in China this past week, I don't know the name of the guy in charge of China right now, but he gave the command to all Christians living in China, remove your picture of Jesus out of your living room. Get it out, and I want my picture in there. Why? He doesn't want competition. Yep. He's scared of a picture of Jesus. You know what we call that? Xmas. Let's get rid of the picture of Christ. Let's boot him out. It, the, our lesson today is just as relevant back then as it is today. So oh, here's Herod, and he goes to the scribes. Okay, guys, tell me about this king guy being born, king of the Jews. So they come to him, and they go ahead and read the verse out of Micah 5 2. Now, this is the whole gist of probably of why this message came about. Uh, my wife is employed at a, a certain place. This, this person that helped us get the job told my wife she does not believe that Jesus Christ is God. Does not believe he's God. Now, I'm pulling around in my head. There's all sorts of things the Holy Spirit throws in there for me to think about. One time I was supposed to meet this that pastor from India over in uh, at Wendy's, and he never showed up. So some guy was sitting there and wanted to chat with me. So I talked to the guy. I think, I think the guy's a Christian, if not an apostate, something to that effect, because he was telling me about he had a Muslim friend come over, and the Muslim guy was saying Jesus is more mentioned in the Quran than it is in the Word of God. All right? Interesting. But they don't believe. What about the Muslims? None of the Muslims believe that Jesus Christ is God. Where do they exit the Christmas story? Right here with Herod. Herod is a picture of the Antichrist who's going to be ruling and reigning for seven years. And that's a fun study if you ever want to get into that. But when the scribes go ahead and they start quoting this verse, oh, by the way, also the Mormons don't believe he's, Jesus Christ is God. The Jehovah Witnesses don't believe he's God. Why in the world are they celebrating Christmas? He is God. Period. No question asked. The scripture is given here. So what happens with these guys from uh, scribes quoting Matthew 5, 2? What happens? They leave the last part of the verse out. Now get this. The scribes have the perfect word of God. We find in John chapter 14, Christ says, if it was not so, I would have told you. The, so we have the King James and the Masoretic text running around during the time of Christ. There's no phony copies around. What do the scribes do? In their flesh nature, they cut out God. Scratch them out. Now, we also have in here, Matthew, or Isaiah 7, 14, said he was going to be a, a virgin, or the, the Mary would be a virgin. So he'd bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. They knew it, and they cut it out. Amen. Xmas. Amen. This is so deep, guys. And it's so powerful. It's what's going on in our culture today. Xmas is everywhere in our culture. They don't want him in the Supreme Court. They don't want him in the Senate. They don't want him in the House of Representatives. And they don't want him in the churches. Amen. He has kicked out. We are in the Laodicean church age where Christ is knocking on the door trying to get back in. He's been axed out. Out. We got a program. We got all the money we have. We don't need Christ. We're doing very fine. No, thank you. All right? Exodus, that is what is happening in our culture here. Okay, the dividing point for all the world is right here on Matthew uh, 2.5.
is Jesus Christ, is Jesus God revealed in flesh at Christmas? That's the dividing point. Now, we take a look, you, whether you go to Kroger's, where you go to any of the stores, and Macy's, all the place, every single one of them has Christmas stuff up. But yet you go around passing out tracks, trying to win them to Christ, you're kicked out of the store. We don't want you in here, out. We'll take your money, out. We don't want your influence, out. I heard a testimony of a guy that worked for Walmart. If you think Target is bad, you ought to hear this guy's testimony of what Walmart did to him on the same identical thing out there in Arizona. Whew. Booted him out because of the same identical thing. There's things you and I don't even have a clue what's going on behind these businesses. But it's uh, Starbucks. I wouldn't be a bit, bit surprised if they're not decorated for Christmas. You know, and yet, goodbye Jews. We don't want the Jews around. The Muslims went ahead around Jerusalem and they blocked up the Eastern Gate because they don't want the prophecy to come true. Which means they suspect it's going to come true. <laughs> okay? You don't block it if you don't believe something's going to happen. I heard a story of a guy from uh, Japan, 44 years old, perfect health, and he heard of the prophecy of Christ going through the Eastern Gate. So he flew to Israel, and apparently he got a jackhammer and was getting ready to drill a hole through that door. <laughs> Died of a heart attack. Oh. He didn't even get started. Pff, right there, pff, gone. Guys, don't mess with the Word of God. Amen. Don't mess with it. God manifests in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Look at all the new Bibles on that verse. See if you can find it. They have tampered with it because they want to bring in the Antichrist. Number three, Jesus said, If ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. That verse is hardly talked about or preached about. Guys, if Jesus Christ is not God, then you don't have to worry about that verse. Right. He is God. He did die on the cross for our sins, and the invitation is, come unto me. Come. Come. That's the invitation. God does not force himself on you. He's calling you. Come. Come unto me. I can take care of you. Any problem you have, come unto me. I can handle it. He also said before Abraham was, I am. For those who don't think that Jesus Christ didn't say that he was God, here's a good verse for you. I am. That's the name of God. He's here. Number five, corrupting God's word by denying Christ's deity denies your salvation. Right. Mm -hmm. Yet, uh, Jehovah Witness, how are you going to get saved? You've just denied Christ being God, Mormon. How are you going to get to heaven? Right. Glenn Beck, come on, pal. Amen. Come on, you're a Mormon now? Yeah. By the way, we gave him a track personally. Amen. He cannot say he did not get the gospel. Right. He got it. Amen. I, don't, I haven't seen him turn yet. All right, but he got the gospel. Okay, our lust nature of pride produces fear of replacement. Let's take a look here. Here's personal in the lust nature. Out of Matthew chapter 2, personal. He was troubled. Good old Herod was troubled because that's his title, King of Kings, and here's somebody coming to replace him. What's the flesh nature do? <sighs> Attack. All right, let's take a look at the word city. All of Jerusalem was disturbed. Not just the king, the whole city's disturbed. Mm -hmm. Xmas for personal, Xmas guys for the whole city. And Jerusalem is still going to be disturbed all the way up to the final time frame. And now here's the nation. We will not have this man reign over us. The whole Jerusalem, the whole Judea, the whole Jews got rid of them. And if you know anything about Acts chapter 7, Christ offered them for the third time to be accepted, and they rejected them, and the whole nation has been on the subtract ever since. God has now taken the gospel and has now gone to the Gentiles. Now, two things that you should be aware of. God, America, we keep praying for America. We want to see things happen. What has America done?